Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Tracy, and this is a channel where we upcycle clothing, purses, and accessories from pre-owned items. And today I'm working on this necklace. Everything here was thrifted or gifted to me, and it's a collage, shabby chic sort of necklace. Now I've made and sold these over the years, and they go for quite a bit. Now, do your market research. A lot of people ask me, what would you charge for that? Or what did you charge? Well, I mainly sold on eBay. So I did auctions and the prices varied. And that was a long time ago. You're different, your items are different, your selling platforms are different. So it's really hard for me to say what to charge for something like this. But my favorite place to research was Etsy. I'd go into Etsy and for something like this, I'd type in shabby chic necklace, boho collage necklace, vintage lace necklace, things like that, and just see what other people are selling them for. And I did some research, Ooh, they're selling for a lot. And mine used to sell very well too. I mean, I sold them on auction i think one went over 200 but these are just so fun and maybe you don't want to deal with big giant projects some of my projects are really big this is just fun to do at your table and relax so let's get to it now the first thing i do when i get started on one of these is i just grab a bunch of my supplies things i think will look good on this and i look at texture, contrasting textures and colors. Is everything cohesive, scale? And once, and I just start laying everything on top of one another. And when I think it looks pretty good, I take a picture of it. And then I put a lot of my supplies off to the side and I just sort of work on what I had gathered. And the first thing I did on this one was I took a piece of lace and I think this was like a tablecloth or something. And I cut a strip 69 inches long and approximately two inches wide. And I tied a generous bow. Now that'll be off to the side when a person is wearing it. And this will give me my base to start everything. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, this is all about layering. And the first layer does not have to be amazing. It's about how it all works together. Now, this is sort of an ecru colored um, large doily or small tablecloth. Now, I already have a piece cut out of the center here. I want to cut sort of a U-ish shaped piece. So I'm just going to cut. This one is all stained and pretty bad shape, but I'm going to try to avoid those bad spots. Now I have a piece sort of shaped like this. Now I'm just laying this first piece in sort of an oval, kind of how it would be hanging on the neck. And I have a little twisty in here, that's okay. And I'm going to take that piece that I just cut and I'm just going to lay it down over top of that lace piece. Now it's longer on this side. Maybe I want it longer on the other side. Let me turn it around. What I'm trying to do is there's a point at the bottom of this ecru color. I want it at the bottom of the necklace and I'm just going to lay the rest on there. And I'm going to stick a few pins in it because I'm going to sew this on with my machine. And when you have lace like this, it's nice to weave your pin in and out a little bit because there's not a lot there for the pin to grab onto. Now, this is pinned. I'm just going to go to my machine. I'm going to use my largest zigzag stitch. I will be using off-white thread and I will do a stitch right down the center, starting at the top all the way around. Now, there will be edges that aren't stitched on, and that's okay because we will be sewing so much onto this, it will be secure by the time we're done. Okay, 
So that's what that's looking like. And now I have this dress that a girlfriend donated to me. She It was new actually and she didn't want to return it. I've already used it on another project, but I'm going to use it on this one. So at the top, there was a piece of, I'd say, applique on some netting and some beading, little sequins and a little rhinestone-y looking thing. I just cut it right off. And yeah, when you cut something like this that's beaded and stuff, the beads and things will fall off. But I don't really care. I just take it and I just let them all finish falling off. And whatever's going to fall off, falls off. Whatever stays, stays. So I'm going to use that for my next layer. Okay, so this piece is about 20 inches long. And it varies from about one and a half to two and a half. And I'm just going to cut this into odd little sections. One, two, three, four, five sections. And now I'm just going to lay these sections on in various places. Now I'll have to play with this a little bit and I'll come back and show you where I have them placed. Okay, here's where I decided to place mine. This one extends past the ecru colored lace a little bit got an angle, a chunkier one down here. This one comes off the side a little bit and I have this one at an angle. Now I'm going to stick a couple pins in each one. I need to go grab my pin. Now I'm just going to sew these on. I'm going to use the straight stitch sticking with my off-white thread and I am going to go around the whole thing. The parts that are on the ecru colored lace. Now anything extending, of course, I don't need to sew. So this one, for example, I'll just do a straight stitch from here to make a little square there. Now here I'll just stay along the edge of this lace, so right here, and just get those all sewn on. Okay, now I have the pink all sewn on. What I want to do is I have this little petite tassel fringe. It's kind of a, a peachy color and it's 29 inches long. I want to take one end and I'm going to pin it sort of high at the top on this side. And then the opposite side, I'm going to drape underneath the necklace a little bit and I'm going to pin it a little bit lower than this side. Stick a pin in it. So this one's still just pinned. I have this green lace and I cut a piece off. I just used this for another project and I had it left over. Now I want to pin this with this, with the same pins, but I want this one to drape in between the bottom of here and this one. And this one is 26 inches long. So I'm just going to lay it there, remove that pin and pin both at the same time. Okay, now I'm just going to go to my machine and just with a real simple straight stitch, I'm going to go over this right here and go over this right here so that the tassel trim and the lace is attached to the necklace. Okay, so now I have this interesting little piece of trim floating around here and I want it to drape below this tassel fringe, but this is all I have. So I'm going to have to pin this and sew it onto that acru lace, that base sort of that we're sewing everything on, but I'm going to have to go a little lower, but I do want it higher on this side. So I'll put that about there. And then I'm going to look at it 
so that it drapes below that tassel fringe. And I'm going to have to sew it, find a little spot under here, about there. So that's what that's looking like. And I'm going to go to my machine and I'm just going to put a little straight stitch there and a little straight stitch there. Okay, so now I have another green piece of tattered little lace and I'm going to lay it down towards the top right here and I'm going to lay it down right over top of this tassel fringe and this other piece of lace and that will be sewn down with this. So I'll just put it there, pin it down and I'm just going to sew around the edges here. I don't want to sew all these fun little tattered pieces. Okay, there's that little piece I just sewed on. Now I'm going back to that one of those original pieces of lace that we used. And this has, look how stained it is, oh my gosh little flower designs in it and I cut out two. Now I am going to sew these on. One I'm going to put about right there and I'm covering that tassel fringe and that lace and I will be sewing that down with this. So I stick a little pin in there and then the second one there's kind of a blank spot right here at the bottom. I am going to put this kind of in a diamond shape right there, pin that on. Now I'm not going to take you to the machine every single time I sew one of these little pieces on, but what I'm going to do is just with a straight stitch, I'm going to go around sort of the edge of the flower and I'm going to let these little lacy pieces just be loose and add a little dimension to the necklace. And I'm going to do the same to this one. Okay, there's my two little pieces I just sewed on. Now I'm going back to that pink dress. On the center in front here was this pr pretty little beaded applique that I just seen ripped off. And I am going to put that right here and I'm going to hot glue it. And why am I not using E6000 jewelry glue? Well, because that takes overnight to dry. And if I was to glue it on with that, I'd have to let it sit overnight before I start anything else on here. And in my experience, hot glue holds things wonderfully. So you're welcome to sew things like this on. And if you're selling these, it might be a little bit better for business if you were to say everything machine and hand sewn. But if you glue some pieces on, and it's fun to actually hand sit in front of the TV and hand sew all these beautiful little pieces on. I love doing that, but I'm not doing that today. But um you would want to put in your listing if you're selling this. This creation is a combination of hand sewing, machine sewing, and some pieces are glued. So just disclose it if you use glue. You wanna see a fun little hot glue trick? Okay, so I am almost ready for a new glue stick, but not quite. It's still sitting there and it's just gonna flop out. Put a little dab of glue on the end of your glue stick and stick it to the other one and stays nice and tight. Okay, now I am just going to take my piece and I'm just going to put a little glue at the top and put it where I want it. Hold that down, of course, till the glue cools. And now I'm just going to lift this up and just glue a little bit at a time I don't want to take the chance of putting all this glue down and it cools before I get to it. So now I'll hold that down and I'll just keep doing that until I'm all the way at the bottom. Okay, 
So now I have a little basket of flowers. Whenever I get any sort of random flower in my studio that I don't know what to do with, I throw it in there so I can dig through when I do projects like this. Now I have this kind of plain flower originally and you know, something you get at the store, but I coffee stained this years ago and it's been sitting in my basket and how I used to coffee stain, just regular coffee that you'd make in a coffee pot. I would just dip it in there and I would put it on a cookie sheet and bake it in my oven for like, at like 150, I'd like to say 200, but I'm scared to say that because I don't want you to burn anything up. It's been so long since I've done it. Now I'm just going to hot glue this because that will be hard to sew. And I'm going to put it at the bottom of this sequined applique, but it's the top of this is going to overlap the bottom of this one a little bit. So I'm just going to put a big glob of glue on my flower. Now my, I need a new glue gun. This is not coming out very good. Okay. And then I will just conform the fabric that's behind it to that little stem and everything that's in the back of the flower. Okay. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do, which might seem a little weird, but I'm taking this silk, what's left of this 100% silk shirt. It's kind of a pink mauve color. And I cut out seven strips and they range between four and a quarter and six and a quarter inches long. And what these are, are just the seams. I cut along seams so that they'll fray a little bit, but they won't completely unravel because of those that stitching. And I'm just going to lay them in sort of a loose little X. Like that. Okay, so now here's my little loose X. About, not quite in the center, a little above the center, I'm going to stitch across and stitch that onto my necklace. And I'm not going to pin this or anything. There's just too many little parts. I'm going to sew it. Here's the top of that green lace, the top of that tassel fringe. I'm going to sew it right across there to hide sort of those raw edges. And when I sew it in the center, a little above the center, it will flop over and just be kind of a wispy, whimsical, a little cluster of pink. <laughs> okay, so now what I want to do, I have a little piece of applique from a wedding dress that a girlfriend gave me to cut up and do with as I please. And I'm going to break up some of this green with that. So I will lay it right there and I will go to my machine, maybe go a little bit lower, and I'm just going to sew a circle around it to get it sewn on and leave some of the edges, uh, maybe half an inch from the edge so that it kind of fluffs out at the edge. Okay, so now I have this blanket that I have been cutting on. I've been using, it has little birds on it, and I've been using the birds for applique on other projects. But what this has are little tassels in the corners and I cut one off and I'm going to show you what I'm gonna do with it. Okay, I'm just cutting this up a little bit and I'm making two little kind of messy piles. And I'm going to sew them on the necklace on this side. Now I put a pin right here because I won't pin these on. That would be too difficult. But I did mark where I want these to go so that I know when I'm sitting at my machine. So I put a pin here and a pin here. And I will, when I'm at my machine, I'll lay that on and I'll just put a straight stitch right down the center of all those little strings there and do the same here. Now these are sewn on. I'm just going to fluff them up 
mess them up a little bit. Okay, so now I went back to that piece of lace we've been cutting on and I cut three just random strips about a foot long and I'm folding them in half, but I want them not to be exactly in half. I want the front to be a little shorter. Now I'm just pinning them on to sew. And this one, I already stuck a pin where I want it. So I will just angle that a little bit so that it flops outside the necklace, pin that on. And then I did the same right underneath of that flower that's pinned. And then I did one on this side right here. And now I'm going to go to my machine and just put a straight stitch right at the top of each one of those. Okay, so in my little basket of flowers, I have this vintage velvety, and I never have known how to pronounce this. I think it's millinery flower. And I'm going to hot glue it right there. Okay, so since this is blue, I want to tie in a little blue somewhere else. And I have this ribbon. I actually got it at Hobby Lobby not too long ago. And I just loved it. It's one and a half inches wide, and it's called silk-like cut edge ribbon. And it looks and feels like silk. But I'm just going to make the most simple little flower out of this. No sewing. I'm just going to pinch a piece of this. And then I'm going to use two fingers and I'm going to wrap it around my fingers loosely as I twist. And so I will twist, let's see, three, four, five. Now I'm going to take it off my fingers, snip that, give it a little twist. And now I am going to nestle it sort of by this um, coffee colored flower. So I am just going to put a glob of glue right here. Now you can sew all this if you want. My way isn't necessarily the right way or everyone's way, it's just what I do. And I'm just going to hold that down until the glue cools. Okay, so in my little basket of flowers, I have like a tiny little cream color one, silk flower. Now these little pink roses are, feel like paper. And then I have these sort of ceramic-y clay flowers. And I'm going to glue them on because that would be too hard to sew. You know, that, I don't know what it is, clay? Um, so I am just going to glue these and I'm making the centers of this um, little fringe sort of the background to the flowers. So like this one, I'm going to put a glob of glue there and I'm going to press the back and make that fabric conform to the flower and hold it until it cools. And now I'll just sort of lay the rest on where I think I might want them and just get them laid out and then I will glue them on. Maybe one there. Maybe there. I'll play with that a little bit and get them arranged how I want them. I like where they are. Now I'm just going to glue them all on. Okay, there's what the flowers look like. I may add more throughout here once I get the major parts done. I like to evenly distribute things. It won't be even because this is a cluster, but I want to sprinkle a few more throughout, most likely. Now I cut a piece of fabric from that silk shirt, and it's about two foot long and about an inch wide. Now I'm going to find the center and underneath this flower right here, 
I want to make a bow. And so then I have a cluster of three. I really like groups of three. So it'll be this flower, a blue flower, and a bow to make the group. What, what I want to do is take the center. I'm going to go to my machine, and I'm going to lay it sort of diagonal right here. And I'm just going to put a stitch straight across because then when I'm done, I can tie it in a knot and tie it in a bow. Okay, I haven't tied this in a bow yet. It's sewed on. But do you see how that's wavy? I'll show you how I do that. That's actually sort of a little cheat that I have when I don't, I didn't have, this is so tattered, the silk, I've used it so much. I didn't have a long enough piece. I wanted it about two foot and I didn't have a long enough piece on there. So this is the cheat I use. So this little cheat gives you a curly cue fabric. So I did have a chunk in my shirt that was eight by six. Okay. And then I just cut the corners off and round them. Now this is just a sample one, so I'm not making sure this is perfectly smooth or anything. Okay, so once those are rounded, ugh, that's terrible. Anyway, I go up the side and I want it about an inch wide and I just cut around and around about an inch from the side until I get smaller and smaller. Then when I come up the side, you know, just clip it wherever you want. And then you have a long piece that has a fun little curl to it. Now I'm just going to tie this into a bow. Now I have this little piece that came off of a wedding dress. And it's stitchable right across the top there. Underneath this big flower where this lace is, right on top of the lace, I'm going to sew that right there. Okay, now I have just some pieces of tulle. This is from a veil, some white ones, and then I have some pink tulle from that dress that my friend gave me. And I am just going to randomly tie these around the necklace. Now like this one I'll do here and I am just going to tie it and I'm going to shrink that up a little bit because it was wide and I'm going to double knot it and just let that hang. And I think maybe I'll take a piece of that wedding veil and in between these little pink clusters of tassel I think I'll do a double knot there. Pull that in. Oh, that's a very fragile. This was an antique wedding veil. So maybe I'll double that up and do the same thing. Double knot. I'm kind of doing it on the side so it kind of hangs off like that. And I am just going to keep doing that until I'm satisfied. <laughs> well, they're breaking, but I'm gonna have to cut a couple more. Okay, so I went back to that lace that I made this bow out of because it has a delicate look, but it's sturdy. So I'm going to continue that process. And then maybe after I tie I can add another piece of tool that's more fragile because I don't have to tie it so hard. Okay, I'll just keep going around and doing that. Okay, now I just want to add some jewelry remnants. And what I'm going to do, if it's a brooch, I'll pin it on. If it's like this, I'm going to glue the ends, but I'm going to sit down tonight and relax and watch TV and I'll sew everything on permanently but right now I'm just putting a dot of glue on like these pearls and pieces just so I know where they go and I have this 
This is just plastic, but it has kind of a vintagey color to it. I think I will put this at an angle one side higher than the other, and I'm going to let it droop below everything else, and I think I'll come around. Now, this is just plastic. You can cut those little strings. Now, I'll put a dab of glue at the tips of each one of these, but then one pearl down, I'll just stitch that really good, and same over here. Now I have these two little darker pieces. I'm going to put those right here because I don't want that dark flower. Maybe I'll put one up here and one down here. I don't want that dark flower to be the only thing dark on here. So I'll put a little dab of glue there and right here. Now I have this cool old brooch. I'm going to pin it right there. Now I have this little rhinestone piece. It has that sort of pin on it. I'm going to put that right here. Okay, now I think the last thing I'm going to do is just put some pearl type beads all around. Maybe one here. Okay, I decided I don't like the blue flower on there and I'm trying to pull it off and I just wanna show you how good the hot glue sticks because I'm having trouble. It doesn't just pop off. Yeah. So I'm going to work on that. And then I'm going to have to replace it with something else. See, the hot glue is going to hold your stuff. Yeah. Okay, there's where the flower was. I left one of the little leaves. I don't mind a teeny bit of dark. And I just added some jewelry pieces in its place. Okay, here it is all done. What a fun way to use up all those little treasures and scraps you have laying around. I will bring it in closer. I think I'm going to lay it on like a blue tablecloth so you can have more contrast to see what it looks like. You know, yours won't look like mine. You use whatever theme, whatever colors you want. And I want to show you something kind of funny. Okay, so this dress my mannequin is wearing is just a prop. It's kind of a faux fake dress. Now, if you have a mannequin and you're displaying maybe necklaces to sell, this is a fun little cheat. What it is, is just a rectangle of fabric I think it was a bed sheet and I just sewed strips of tulle and lace across it. Now look at the back. Then <laughs> I just sewed little strips of bed sheet on each side so I could tie it together so that it fits her perfectly. But nobody knows, except for you, <laughs> that it's not a dress and what a pretty display for your necklaces, right? I thank you so, so much for watching.